Hi, Andrew here. Continuing our series on defensive pistol ammunition gel testing, today let's take a look at Hornady's 38 Special 90 grain FTX Critical Defense. We'll shoot it from a Smith & Wesson 638 air weight into ballistic gel. Let's get out to the range and take a look. Okay, so with the 90 grain bullet at 38 Special, if you didn't see this coming, maybe you're not real familiar with 38 Special terminal ballistics, but it's kind of what I expected. Hornady did do a good job in that it looks like the expansion was kind of modest, which is what you need to do if you want to see some expansion and decent penetration. But that lightweight bullet just didn't have the sectional density to get deep enough to meet the minimum standard, at least in one shot. So in this shot, the bullet stopped at, at 9.7 inches, and the length of the track is 10.8 inches. Either way you count, it's under the minimum. This one stopped at 12.1 inches and it didn't really bounce back at all. So this one does just barely pass the minimum penetration standard. This one does not. And it's not great to have a big variation in penetration. Let's dig them out of there and see what they look like. So you can see fairly modest expansion and the pedals go all the way to the base of the bullet. Okay, about the same on both of them. Pedals all the way to the base. Modest expansion. Nothing much to write home about and kind of a uh, <laughs> short on the penetration of course as always things usually don't get much better with the heavy clothing but it's possible that the heavy clothing may delay expansion a bit allowing it to meet that penetration standard so let's see what happens with four layers of denim okay so a few pluses and minuses uh, on the bare gel that is the penetration had a very wide range um, one of them fell well below the 12 inch minimum. The other barely met it. As it is, before even looking at heavy clothing results, this is borderline. Barely meets the standard, maybe doesn't meet the standard at best. But we should also look at the heavy clothing results. So let's get back out to the range and shoot this same load through four layers of denim to give it the worst case scenario of tightly packed fibers that can in some cases clog a hollow point and prevent expansion. All right, we've seen this sort of thing happen before, where the denim seems to delay or reduce expansion, which results in deeper penetration than originally with the bare gel. Penetration numbers are 11.9, 13.8, and 15.1. It's a wide range in penetration, and we saw that in the bear gel too, a pretty big range in penetration. The, the range in this case is higher 
than the range in that case, but in both cases we saw a bit of a spread in the amount of penetration. And that's not great, but overall this is going to average within the 12 inch minimum if you count both the bare gel and the heavy clothing and average out the penetration numbers. It isn't terrible, but that's if you ignore this one really short shot from the bear gel. Let's take a look at the bullets. A cute little uh, rubber plug there. Pink, because apparently Hornady thinks that women are too incompetent to carry anything but a 38. Or I, I don't really understand why people decide that 38s are for women. But again, we see very modest expansion, maybe a bit less. We'll need to get some numbers on this, but it looks at first glance to be a bit less expansion than we saw in the bear gel. See how the jacket doesn't go all the way down the shank of the bullet to the base like it did in the bear gel? You can see there too. This one is the closest to the base and still not quite like we saw in the bear gel. So I would expect this to be a little bit higher weight retention maybe and almost certainly less expansion. We'll take some measurements and some good photographs of these bullets when we get home. Okay, being a tipped bullet, it's unlikely to clog with heavy clothing fibers and it did still expand. In both cases, in the bare gel and in the heavy clothing, it expanded modestly, which is important because being a 90 grain bullet, it's light for caliber and has very low sectional density, which means that it's not inclined to penetrate deeply. And that's where things start to get a little sideways. The variation in penetration depth was pretty extreme. We saw between the high end and the low end, several inches of difference and both in the bare gel and in the heavy clothing both shots in both tests were quite a bit apart from each other and that's just not great uh, is it a total failure well no the the average penetration depth still meets the standard and the shortest shot fell short of the standard by a bit but not so shallow that it wouldn't probably normally be good enough all these things together make it mediocre. Um, and maybe, maybe it's just that I'm a little put off by Hornady's, dare I say it, misogyny in packaging this in a pink box as if women just have to have a light 38 special because they, the poor little things can't handle anything else. It's a little off-putting to me. Females can, of course, shoot everything that us big, manly men can shoot. <laughs> Shooting a gun isn't necessarily a manly thing to do, and often women are a lot better at it than we are. And someone new to guns and someone not particularly into guns may not be well served by being given a thirty-eight revolver. They're one of the hardest things to shoot well, a short-barreled Revolver is a difficult thing to master. It's an expert's weapon, not a new person's weapon. Not that women can't become an expert on a short-barreled revolver, but that the implication that a new shooter has to shoot a short-barreled revolver, it's just kind of dumb in my opinion. But that's my opinion, and it's worth every cent that you paid for it. If you disagree, leave a comment below. Tell me how wrong I am. If you have any suggestions on how we can do things better, I'd love to hear it. If you have any other suggestions on how we can do better, I'd love to hear it. As always, like, share, and subscribe. It makes a big difference in growing this channel, but it also helps YouTube understand the sort of things that you'd like to see. And in these days, with the way YouTube has been treating gun channels, that matters more than ever. If you have the time, head on over to our sponsor's website, Ventura Munitions. They're the ones that provided the ammunition that I used in this test, and they make most of our tests possible. Take a look at what they have in stock, and head back over here and tell us what you'd like to see us test next. And as always, have a great day.